Hi, welcome to the third of the UVM Primer videos. My name is Ray Salemi, the author of the UVM Primer. In these videos, we go through the source code associated with the book to give more of a line-by-line -line description of what's going on, uh, whereas the book focuses on the larger concepts uh, of uh, creating a UVM test bench. In this video, we're going to look at the third example in which we take a test bench that was created as one big monolithic file in uh, in the previous chapter and we break it into several files and make it much more modular and reusable. Uh, our previous file was a big file with three different sections and did a lot of different things. This one is much simpler. Uh, you can see that we have here uh, three modules, a tester module that drives stimulus, a coverage module that captures coverage, and a scoreboard module that checks to make sure that the uh, device under test is working properly. These are all held together by this thing here called the Tiny B ALU BFM, which is a system Verilog interface. And you can see that this BFM, we've got it here named BFM, gets passed to the three modules, and also it gets used to instantiate the DUT. So the signals that are connecting everything together are stored in the BFM, or in the interface. They're not in the file. And because they're in the interface, we can pass all the signals around together with essentially as a pointer. And that becomes really important when we look at object-oriented test benches. Now if we look at the uh, tiny LU BFM itself, we see that it is an interface. It declares the signals that we use in the test bench. And you can recognize these signals through the same ones from the previous chapter. It also uh, generates the clock and it gives us a couple of tasks. One task is the reset, which drops the reset signal, wakes a couple of clocks, and then raises it. And then we have a send op task that takes uh, an A, B, and an operation, and using the same code as we had before, calls the tiny ALU. Uh, if it's a reset, it just drops the reset and raises it. If it's a no op, then it just lowers, raises the start signal, then lowers it. And if it's not a no-op, then it sits in this do-while loop, and it waits until, looking at each negative clock edge, uh, it waits until the, the operation has completed, and uh, the done signal goes high, and then it drops the start signal. And that's everything that's going on in this interface. The beauty of this system is that now we can use that to control all of the other parts of the test bench. So, for example, if we look at the tester, we see that the tester takes, uh, it's a module that takes as its input the tiny ALU BFM on the, right on the port list. And then when we look through here, all of this business about get op and get data are the same. But down below here, we, um, we actually can set, use the BFM's um, send op command to send that operation to the, the tiny ALU and then the, the BFM handles the details of managing that. So we, now, again, we have a much smaller, more flexible, and uh, easier to read and easier to reuse code. Uh, we can also see now our coverage module, same deal. At the top, it takes the uh, tiny ALU in, in its port list. All of this cover group stuff is the same as it was before. And in fact, the code down here is the same as it was before. We wait for the negative edge of the bfm.clock. Notice now that we use this bfm.clock and not just clock. And we pull out the A and the B. Uh, we pull out the operation and we call the, uh, the cover groups to check our coverage. The scoreboard module. And once again, we, we're passing it the, BF, the, the bfm. And all we do is wait for the positive edge of the bfm or, or wait for the positive edge of the done signal and when that happens we grab the A and the B out of the bus functional model and we predict the result and then down below here we get the result and we compare it to the predicted result. This code is again exactly the same as before. So uh, now we've seen how we use a bus functional model or a system Verilog interface to share signals around a test bench. And this concept of Storing the signals into an interface and sharing that interface around is going to become critical later on as we create our um, 
object-oriented, and eventually UVM-based test benches.